Hello guys, Ruby here, and today um, I'd like to talk about my um, review, or my early access review of No Rest for the Wicked. And so I've been playing this game for about a week now, I've been having a lot of fun, I can't seem to put the game down. Um, and so I have a few things to share in regards to what I've discovered so far. Now, the long story short here is I'm having a blast. And even I'm having a blast, there are a few things that can be improved in the game, which I'm sure Maybe developers are working on, or they've received some feedback on. Now, um, the game is has been labeled by developers as an action RPG. Now, that is correct to a certain aspect. Now, when you mention, the, or when you use the term action RPG, yeah, action is involved. But what most people term to associate that with are games like Diablo, Path of Exile, stuff like that. Uh, wherein the game has a lot of um, combat, a lot of action scenes, and a lot of enemies filling the screen. I am near godlike um, in your abilities and stuff, just decimating screens of enemies and stuff like that. Toppling insurmountable bosses, all that kind of stuff. That's the power of fantasy in action RPGs. Now, this game is like an action RPG or an ARPG in the form that the um, the game is top-down, isometric, like most action RPGs are, with the camera zoomed out. Um, so it's an in, it's an ARPG in that regard, but with a twist, though, um, in that you're not going to have the power fantasy of Desmanian screen full of enemies, no. This game is more akin to games in the Souls uh, genre, like Lies of P, Bloodborne, and stuff like that. Um, Elden Ring and stuff like that, wherein the combat is a lot more deliberate in regards to when you're approaching enemies, because in this game, just about any enemy can take you out if you're not being careful, and so you, you just don't go in guns blazing like you will in a traditional RPG like D4 and stuff like that. You go in um, being extremely careful of the enemies you're facing, paying attention to their movesets and stuff like that, the swings countering that with your dodges or parries and then um, um, attacking back in retaliation or punishing enemies when you parry them or dodge them and stuff like that. And so that's that's how combat works in this game. Now uh, one of the things I've really enjoyed since I started playing this game um, since it was released last week into early access is also the story. And so I'll try as much as possible not to spoil anything in regards to the story but essentially what's going on here is that in this land, um, a plague um, came about on the land, and the oh, um, the ruler of the land, the king, died, and his son took over. And his son, when his bid to try and get rid of the plague, got the church involved. Well, at least the church, as it stands in this in this realm, in this world, to go ahead and take care of the plague. And so the church um, started an, inquisi an inquisition type uh, movement and came to uh, went about the world trying resolve the or get rid of the plague basically now you as a player you you arrive on the beach after a series of events and then um i won't say anything past that but the story is pretty good from what i can what i can what i've experienced so far now the story is so story is so good when as of a week after the game was released into ali access uh, where the story currently ends, I'm looking forward to what else comes after that um, because it's kind of like a cliffhanger of sorts and I'm sure it's something that devs are working on and I can't wait to find out what happens next. Okay, Now, um, this review I'll be breaking into two main sections. Um, the things I love the most about this game and then the second section of the things that I need to work in the game. Now, one of the things that is very striking in this game is the art style. The art style is phenomenal. The use of colors, their add direction, um, the way lighting works in the game, the ray of light, like right now, and stuff like that, makes I, I just love it. Um, it's it's a lot different from most games out there because this game looks like a painting. It's like you're playing a, a moving painting. You know the old notion of moving pictures. This is like a moving painting, really. It's gorgeous to behold. This also reminds me of specific games like um, Bravely Default on. Um, Nintendo Switch and the 3DS. It's something similar to that. Now, um, apart from the um, the visuals in the game, one of the things that is also pretty striking is the sound score and also the um, sound direction in the game. 
like right now you probably can't hear it Nothing let me see if i can like increase steel. the volume of the game so you can hear it a little bit may your will be half as strong as my will. when enemies talk they especially then in, in an enclosed area like the forge here when Fiumo talks, his voice reverberates around the area as he's hammering the um, the sword he's making. You can actually hear the clink of the anvil, um, his hammer on the anvil and stuff like that. So the sound, um, so the sound effects in the game is really really good. Even when you're walking, you can hear when you're, when you're passing by people, they they make comments and stuff based on what's currently going on. The sound score is also really good because the sound is it has this mellow vibe to the sound that um, puts a sense of urgency in regards to what's going on around you or what's going on in the world itself. Um, it's also the kind of sound you expect to hear when you're watching like a medieval movie that has a lot of um, doom and gloom type stuff. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not as if the sound score is depressing, but the sound score is very fit into the game. Now, apart from the sound score, one of the other things I also love the most about the game is in regards to how itemization works in the game, or how itemization is in the game. Itemization also leads to the gameplay loop in regards to finding gear or making, crafting, or upgrading gear to get the stats that you're looking for. I'll give an example. So right now I'm using a bow build. Um, I'm playing as, um, well, this build is like my archer build. And uh, my archer build uses a resource called Focus. Focus allows you to be able to use runes on your weapons. Um, These are runes here. And runes are basically abilities each weapon has. Now, the abilities or the special abilities that your weapons has is uses the Focus resource. Um, as you use it, it consumes Focus. Now, the itemization of the game is so it's so good that in most games when it comes to your tier of weapons or gear like your common your common your your rare and your legendaries most people just look for the legendaries and the um and the epics awesome. or the rares and just ignore the common on common that doesn't work that same way in this game now this game is itemization itemization is so good that even the common and the uncommon are also really good gear that in some instances you might actually prefer them over a legendary version of it or an epic version case in point my um bow build here now my bow build here i'm using a common bow which is a white item even though it's leveled up to level three in terms of um crafting improvements and the reason as to why I'm doing that is because I want to take advantage of the runes on that bow and I have four here not just that, I also want to take advantage of having four gem slots only on only common items can have up to four gem slots when it comes to weapons now and also only common items can have up to four runes even though legendary weapons can have up to four also but you notice that legendary weapons can only have one gem on them compared to uncommon they can have four gems now so here's where you have to make the decision though when it comes to itemization and this is the cool part of it is it is when you have to weigh the benefits of either having access to four gem slots or having access to passives that uncommon epics and legendaries have so you notice here my bow does not have any um passives on there but my legendary has three passives on it even though one is a negative the same thing with uncommon and epic items they can have passives on them so that's that's a cool thing in regards to itemization and it's not just itemization in regards to your armor on your weapons but also in regards to the accessories too in regards to mix and matching different attributes and specific accessories and gear to make those um the bonuses work for your build for instance on my build here because I'm using focus, you notice that almost every single armor piece I have is geared towards replenishing focus. Even my gloves has focus re regeneration on it. And that's what makes my bow build extremely powerful. I have a video of that though, by the way, if you haven't seen it, if you're interested in using a bow build and um, an archery build in the game, go ahead and take a look at that video. It's a pretty powerful build. It makes um, challenging content like Crucible relatively easy. Now, like I said, the way animization with how good animization works in the game helps with the gameplay loop in regards to you wanting to find gear 
that will work better for your for your build and that's mainly um, essentially what most R ARPGs are the constant grind for gear to find a better item now that also leads me to exploration so uh, let me see if I can go out real quick now with exploration in the game you want to look every single you want to look at every single oh, corner every single hole every too. single underpass and that's because the game does a really good job of hiding stuff from plain sight uh, you might just walk past um, a chest that might contain a resource you're looking for or might contain an armor or weapon piece you're looking for or a gem you, ha you don't even have yet and that's why you want to look every single where where you go you want to go past the um, straight and um, beaten path you want to go to the uncommon path go out of your way to look for stuff and I'm going to show you that as, as um, this review goes on now um, so that that Oh wow, that's a bug. I just fell right through. Okay, but that's good though, because there's a ladder right here. I'll just go all the way back up. And actually, talking about that, exploration, you see? There is an item that wasn't there that I, I never ran into. But thanks to this review and me falling down, <laughs> I actually just found that. And so that's what I mean. Um, look at this view here. You see the way the, um, the um, graphics are? But anyways, going back to exploration though. So, you want to explore um, because you want to find things that are not um, apparent to you or right in front of you and stuff like that. <sighs> and so that's for exploration though. And you see as I'm playing though, like here, there is a whisper over here. You can see it's hidden over there. There's an item up there. I need to figure out how to climb up this ladder to get or get this ladder down so I can climb up it to gain access to that item over there. Or here for instance. If I don't go to this area here, I'll not see that chest down there, which leads to ex the exploration part I'm talking about. Or that bridge up top, I need to figure out how to bring that down so I can reaccess this area later on. So that's explore um, exploration exploratory aspects I was talking about, where you want to make sure you look everywhere, go through under passes, under bridges, check holes, caves, all that kind of stuff. That's that's my bow build in action there. I can see there's even a chest over here. Oh, I just oh well, I've opened that prior to this. So that's one of the other cool things about the game when it comes to exploring. Now, uh, one of the other things that they also did to the game, which needs a little bit of work. Actually, with this, let me st go ahead and start listing the few things that I think needs some work in the game. Uh, since I'm passing by one of the things I'm going to talk about, let's talk about it now. The whispers. So right now, whispers. The way whispers work in the game is that they act as safe points, and they also act as a quick fast travel point where you can go to the last fast travel point. You can see it's only giving me one option. If I tap, it's going to take me back to Sacrament, which is the city I was just in. You see, it took me right back to the last whisper I was in. Now, um, and that's about it. One of the things I'm hoping the devs do down the line is to add additional functionality to the whispers, wherein the whispers will allow you to fast travel to any other whisper location you've unlocked on the map. This will be really good when it comes to traversing through the game. Because as it stands right now, you spend a really good amount of time running back and forth between locations. Wherein if they expand the way whispers work, you can just run back. Um, you can just use whispers to teleport back or fast travel back as opposed to running everywhere. Now, that's just one of the things I, um, that I, I hope they improve on. Now, the second thing that I hope they improve upon, that you might have heard people talk about, is the way inventory is handled in the game. So, um, so inventory in the game, when you first start, you only have a set number of slots or rows you can work with. I need an item called Iker that I get from bosses to both unlock extra rows of your inventory. Now, on this character, you can see on this tab all everything's unlocked. But if I go to my other tab, you can see everything's not unlocked here. Uh, likewise, here yeah, I only have one more to unlock. Just like how on my um, weapon slots and armor slots and stuff, um, I have still have a few more to unlock and stuff like on my utility slot, I have a few more to unlock. Now, one of the things that um, can help with inventory and item management is that right now, because of the limited spaces you have. 
what most people are doing, which is what I did also, is that once I gained the ability to build or purchase a house, the first thing I did was to just fill the house with a bunch of boxes. Um, boxes where I can store items in. Now, this is just a temporary solution because even I have boxes that I can store items in and stuff like that. It's still not elevating the fact that I have limited inventory space. And this is, um, this is very, or this becomes worse when you start going into crafting or upgrading items because as it stands right now currently when you go to a station to use you can only use or craft stuff based off of what you currently have in your inventory you can see right now i cannot craft this simple table because i don't have pine planks or copper ingot in my inventory one of the things i'm hoping the devs add is what i call remote crafting wherein if you go to a crafting station or a vendor you can pull resources from any chest that you have in any of your houses in the game because this will help with a lot of running back and forth so for instance prior to when i put down crafting stations at home to make things a little bit easier whenever i needed to craft i had to make sure i had the right ingredients in my inventory if i didn't i'll have to go back and forth between the vendor and the house if i'm missing anything or i forgot something i have to run all the way back and that can get pretty tedious pretty quickly so that's one of the other things i'm hoping that they add to the game now um outside of that the only other things i can think about is performance improvements to the game uh, the dev sh um, has shown that they are committed to improving the performance in the game in regards to them already having released two hot fixes to the game to help with the performance of the game now um, as much as I love playing games on my PC, um, over the past two years, I've also enjoyed gaming on my handheld PCs. I have a Steam Deck and also have a Lenovo Legion Go. Now, so because of that, I, I, I don't want to say I judge, but I grade yeah. how optimized the game is based on how well a game can run on my handheld PCs. That is my Steam Deck or my Lenovo Legion Go because. I like. I don't want to sit sit in front of a PC every single time. I want to have the flexibility to be able to take a game I purchased with me on the go, and that game being able to run decently well. I don't expect it to run as good as my game in PC, but at least to run decently enough, when I can, I'll have an enjoyable experience playing the game on my handheld um, um, PC. And so that's about it, really. Um, crafting issues, inventory management. Um, improvements to the um, town building crafting system um, in improving the way whispers work in the game and those are really all that I have in regards to things I, that I think needs improvement in the game and um, with that said though I am having a blast playing the game the game is a visual feast um, I love what I'm looking at I love the sound effects how things connect even with the as it's raining right now i can hear thunder i can hear water on the floor you can even you can actually even see it if you look closely you can actually see puddles on the floor you can see the rain hit on the floor and stuff like that um i love the way combat works in the game um even though this is an arpg and it comes kind of like souls i like how deliberate combat is um, on and all, I'm having a blast playing this game. Um, if you're on the fence purchasing this game, the game is currently on sale since um, since it was released in early access, um, and I think it's worth a buy. Um, it's it's a it's a very good game for an early access game. There there are not a lot of bugs at all. Um, the game seems pretty know. polished as it is. Um, it's just Everything that performance right. improvements and yeah, gameplay yeah. improvements or quality of life additions will help the game blossom a lot more or be a lot better than it currently it is and so if you're on the fence i'll highly encourage you to purchase it give the game a try i, I don't think you'll be disappointed i think you're pleasantly surprised um in regards to how the game plays and you'll love it and so with that that's it though this is my um early access review of no rest for the weekend i'm having a blast and i hope you have a blast playing the game too and with that peace happy gaming everyone